tonight on Denver 7 News at 10. From a day at the park to snow on the way, the first official week of spring comes in like a lion. It's a weather action day. Lots of changes here in the next 24 hours, including cold and snow moving in from the west. We shop there all the time, weekly, and that it could have been us. This week marks one year since the Boulder shooting that changed Colorado forever. Tonight, the canvas that expresses our grief and our resilience. Plus, an entire mountain town running out of a precious resource. It's definitely going to be a challenging uh, obstacle to overcome. Their resourceful response to bring water back to Empire. And colorful Colorado takes on a whole new meaning with this giant celebration to kick off spring. We begin tonight with the weather action day. This time lapse shows the clouds coming in as the sun goes down, foreshadowing some major changes on the way tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Allen. I am Brian Wang. Setting the scene today, temperatures in the 60s. We found packed playgrounds at Wash Park and people just enjoying the warm air. But by tomorrow, your morning commute could be cold and wet. Meteorologist Stacy Johnson's talking snow. Stacy. That's right. After we pass midnight tonight, we'll start to see the rain changing over to snow here across eastern Colorado. That's after a high of 66 degrees at DIA today, 70 in Ray and 76 in La Junta with 40s and 50s up through the high country. Everybody enjoying a nice warm Sunday. Now, as we go into tonight, we'll have an overnight low of 30 degrees. We'll have rain after we pass midnight and then as we get to the early morning hours, it'll change over to snow as this temperature drops and then we'll see wet conditions here on the roadways early on. Now this front and low pressure area is moving in so we have the cold air and we also have the moisture headed this way. We're already seeing rain and snow down into southern Colorado and the same off to our west into our mountain towns. But at this point we have a high wind warning going into effect for tomorrow from Colorado Springs down toward Colorado City and into Trinidad. We have a winter storm warning into southern Colorado along with winter weather advisories. We could see about five to ten inches of snow down here into the southeastern part of our state as the storm really winds up. Up in the high country we're expecting lighter amounts of snowfall and also the same here for the front range. But our hourly planner tomorrow includes light snowfall as we go through the day. It looks like it's setting up just like the last one we saw where the light snow will fall, but we'll mainly see wet roads here for the metro. If you're closer to Castle Rock or Monument, you may have slushy roads in the morning, but we'll talk more about our second round of snow that shows up on Tuesday coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Stacy. This week, Boulder will mark a painful milestone. One year since the shooting at King Supers that claimed 10 lives. The Table Mesa store will be closed to the public tomorrow night and will reopen Wednesday morning. Inside the store, you will find a massive painting created by a Boulder artist. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez spoke with the artist who says the artwork has helped her confront her own grief from that painful day. Every work of art creates a sense of meaning and purpose for its creator. Instead of painting the trees, I'm leaving negative and positive spaces. For Lael Har, one of her latest pieces came with a great deal of responsibility, painting an enormous canvas that would sit at the front of the Table Mesa King Supers. This is my neighborhood. This was important for me to contribute to my community, to the healing process and an opportunity that I had to work through my grief and bring healing through that process and hopefully gift my community with that. Har was out of town when the shooting took place, but still felt the shock. My kids walk to the store that we shop there all the time, weekly, and that it could have been us. In just three months, Har created this canvas in her Boulder studio. I had to divide it into four so I can get it out the front door. So it's from that corner till about here. You know, I had to use a ladder to reach the very top to paint the mountains and the clouds. Although it sits inside a location with a painful history, it's not to nature brings the warmth and the joy of the outdoors inside. I've gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of gratitude that this is heart opening, that, that coming to the store and seeing this is um, again uplifting for people. The art has uh, the power for healing. I think in bringing beauty and bringing soothing and when people see it, they feel welcomed. What was one of her most challenging creations will now catch the eyes of thousands who enter for years to come. For me, once I finish a painting and it's hanging and it's appreciated, it's no longer my painting. It's now appreciated and part of the community. So it's hopefully continues 
to gift the community for what it's meant. Ivan Rodriguez, then verse 7. The artwork so incredibly uplifting. Ivan, thank you. All King Super's locations will have a moment of silence at 2.30 p.m. Tuesday to remember the 10 lives lost. Denver 7 will have team coverage of the Remembrance Day Tuesday, both on air and on our streaming platforms. All right, fire crews saved a few pets from a house fire in Douglas County today. South Metro Fire was called to a home on Glasgow Court around 5 this evening. No one was home when the fire started. Crews managed to get two dogs and one cat out of the home. One more cat is unaccounted for, but fire crews are still searching for it. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A motorcyclist rushed to the hospital after crashing to, into another motorcycle in Denver. You can see the video here. It happened tonight at the intersection of Colorado Boulevard and 17th near City Park. Denver police tell us the rider had serious injuries and the crash investigation shut down that intersection for a while. It has since opened back up. All right, now to the conflict in Ukraine and the ultimatum from Russia. Vladimir Putin has a new warning for one city as shelling continues throughout the entire country. All this as 10 million people are displaced from their homes, according to the UN. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in New York with the latest. As shelling across Ukraine continues, an ultimatum from Russian military commanders. Russia giving Ukrainian forces in Mariupol until 4 a.m. local time to surrender. A senior Russian commander saying local authorities, including the mayor, will face a military tribunal if they do not lay down their arms. This amid reports of another attack on civilians, a Mariupol school where 400 people were sheltering. Most of the city is in ruins. Up to 300,000 are trapped. Some in Mariupol are worried about essentials like food and firewood. University librarian Irina says we have been in a basement for 11 days. This is the 25th day of war. We have been counting every one of them. We hope for the best to live as humans. The UN says 10 million Ukrainians are without a home, nearly a quarter of the country's population, nearly 3.4 million refugees fleeing to neighboring countries, another 6.6 .6 million displaced within Ukraine. In Warsaw, Poland, for the most vulnerable, a rare moment of normalcy. Ukrainian refugee children playing and later coming together to sing. A chance to forget the war and family left behind to fight in it. All these activities, such things that all people are doing for us, they forget about um, their daddies who are there, who are fighting. And as refugees continue to flee, President Joe Biden heads to Brussels this week to meet with NATO and G7 leaders. He will not be stopping in Ukraine. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. As the humanitarian crisis grows overseas, a Denver family here is coming together to show their support for the people of Ukraine. That's right. They just launched a fundraiser, and many people in the community are already joining the effort to help. The McFarland family recently went to buy a Ukrainian flag to show their support for Ukraine, but at checkout... They were told it was the last one the store had. The family decided to start making their own Ukrainian flags out of wood pallets and sell them to help Ukrainian charities. It's tough to see the kids and what they're going through. It's hard not to get emotional. I just think about my daughter. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and what would happen you know, if we were in that situation, getting her and my wife out of the country and me having to stay behind. It's tough to think about what that will be like. It really is. And the money raised goes to the International Rescue Committee helping refugees. And it also books rooms on Airbnb. No intent to stay there, but to get money directly to Ukrainians. The minimum no do donation for a flag is $25. And we do have a link on the DenverChannel.com. All right, today hundreds of Coloradans are celebrating the official end of a long winter and the start of spring in the most colorful way possible. Take a look. <laughs> this is the biggest holy celebration in our area. Ooh. My family, you can see, is here joined in the fun Aww. at the Hindu Temple of the Rockies in Centennial this afternoon. That's my husband right there. Holy is <laughs> known as the Festival of Colors. You can see why it joyously marks the beginning of spring, symbolic of the triumph of good over evil. We had some great food, music, dancing, and of course, lots of colors. Running out of water and running out of time. Without water, we can't operate. The mountain town shutting down because of a major leak and what they plan to do about it. It's companionship and also 
you know, having somebody at home all the time. Yes, our pets keep us company and so much more. What researchers find about their brain-boosting benefits through the years.